thought I would go acoustic today since it's been a while. So I've got the Martin out and I'm going to be looking at some acoustic blues, some Delta blues. I think I'm fairly sure this song qualifies as Delta blues, though uh, if I've got that wrong, I'm sure somebody out there will put me right. The song I've chosen is Devil Got My Woman by Skip James. I nearly said Skip Spence there. That's another great Skip who I should probably look at at some point on my channel but yes skip james today and if you've not heard this song i suggest you go and take a listen right now it's one of the most haunting and intense recordings in all of blues i think and right up there with robert johnson's hellhound on my trail which i read they've actually got quite a lot in common it seems that robert johnson was influenced by skip james when he was writing and recording hellhound on my trail and they share the same tuning they share a similar overall kind of feeling and before we go any further i'm going to have a play through the song and it's a little bit tricky to do justice to this haunting blues masterpiece in a youtube guitar tutorial video but i'm going to do my best and then i'm going to take you through how to play it <laughs> Let's start by getting in tune and one of the trademarks of the Skip James sound is his use of an open D minor tuning. I think that's where a lot of the darkness and intensity comes from in his music. So I'm currently in standard tuning and I'm just going to show you how to get to D minor tuning from here. So notes in a D minor chord are D, F and A. So all of the strings are going to be one of those notes. Let's start by tuning the low E string down to a D. I'm just using my fourth string as a reference point here and just tuning the, the low E string down until it matches. We're going to also tune the top string down to a D in the same kind of way. It's about there. So we've got D, A and D can stay as they are because they're both in the D minor chord. The G string, this needs to go down to an F. Now this, this might be the hardest note to, to get. You can just do it by ear. That F is going to be the minor third of the chord. Or you could use this F note here as a reference point. That's the eighth fret on the fifth string. So that's what we're going for. It's about there. And finally we're going to tune the B string down a tone to A. So we've got another A string here to use as a reference. So there we have our open D minor chord and what I'd usually do is then just check that with an electronic tuner but I think it's it's good kind of ear training practice to try and get there without a tuner to start with I think. Now let's get into the song itself and on one level it's a very simple song, it's a two chord song, we've just got D and A and there's lots of the same kind of ideas and motifs recurring throughout the song. But on the other hand it's quite a complex song to play exactly like the record, there are lots of little idiosyncrasies and kind of the quirks of the Skip James style which are very very hard to replicate exactly. 
and I'm not even going to attempt to play it exactly like the record. Um, I think that would drive you nuts trying to get all of those little details. So what I'm trying to do in this lesson is I'm trying to be as faithful to the recording as I can while still giving you a nice playable and learnable version of this tune. Just a quick word on fingerstyle technique then. And I'm for the most part using my thumb on the bass notes and then either my index finger or middle finger for the higher notes. Uh, not sure exactly how Skip James would pick this piece. There's no video footage of him playing this tune in this tuning. There, there is some footage of him playing the, the song in the 60s, but it seems like he's playing it in standard tuning. So not exactly sure how he does it, but you can see that generally his technique is a thumb and then two or three fingers in his picking hand. And this piece is, for the most part, one of these steady bass pieces. The thumb is playing a steady bass note, four notes to the bass. Not quite consistent to always being four quarter notes per bar, but for the most part that's what's going on. And then we've got some melody parts played on the higher strings with the fingers. So up to you which fingers you use for those notes. And uh, as I say, I'm using mostly my first finger and middle finger. The introduction then starts like this. So we've just got this little pick up here. It's frets one, two, three, four on the third string. And then we've got a little melody on the higher string. So it's four on the third string, open to third on the second string, and then the open top string. And I think I'm playing the two top strings together. And I'm adding in some bass notes here with my thumb. I'm playing the sixth string here. And then I'm moving to the fourth string on beats two, three, and four. One, two, three, the recording the bass notes aren't always that distinct but I think it helps to have those in there just to establish that steady bass right at the start of the tune. And then all we're really doing is moving this little two note shape down one fret at a time. So we've then got so just playing on the top two strings here. adding in an extra little melody note at the third fret and then moving down again then some bass stuff going on I've got the fourth string a little bend at the third fret on the low string and then the open D so if I play all of that got a, a couple of bars where we're just kind of filling in with some D stuff. So the bass is just rocking back and forth between six and four. I've got my third finger at the third fret on the second string. And I'm really just going back and forth between the open top string and that third fret note. So we've got You don't have to be too precise on that, just uh, fill in two bars of that kind of D stuff. Again, on the recording, it's a little bit unclear exactly what's going on. Then we're working our way up the neck to, to play this kind of stuff. So I'm sliding up to the seventh fret on the top string, and I'm also holding down the seventh fret on the third string as well. Uh, I'm playing the first and third strings together. I'm using my thumb and my index finger here. In a kind of triplet rhythm. And I'm putting down my, I'm using my little finger at the ninth fret there as well. And then I've got this little bluesy bend at the eighth fret on the second string. open fourth string and then I'm into this shape which 
which is the same kind of idea. I'm keeping the seventh fret on the top string, but I'm moving my first finger over to the seventh fret on the fourth string and doing the same kind of thing. And then another little bend at the eighth fret on the second string. And just some open string stuff there. And then we're down to the first position and the, the vocals enter and we're at the start of the first verse. So when Skip James starts singing, the harmony changes from D to A. We're kind of going to the four chord. And in this tuning, we're playing this shape here. I've got the second fret on the fourth string. I've got the open fifth string. And then I'm pressing down the third fret on the second string, second fret on the top string. It's that that shape that we're using here. So I'm going. So I'm playing the bass notes. Then I'm playing the top two strings. My thumb is playing the fourth string. Got an open second string. I'm moving my first finger down. And we've got a little triplet on the top three strings. to that chord shape. Open second string and I'm playing two to three on the second string together with the thumb on the fourth string. So all together that is one, two, three, four. Then we're changing back to the D chord and we've got lots of this kind of thing. So for the most part the thumb is very simple, it's just rocking back and forth between the sixth and the fourth strings. And then we're playing some stuff on the top two strings. It's mostly the open top string and the third fret on the second string. Sometimes we're just going down to the second fret as well. Then we've got this really nice idea. Actually quite a tricky bar, so I'll just try and break this one down in a, a little bit of detail. We've got the outside strings and the third fret on the B string, or the, the second string I should say. And we're playing the second string again. Then we've got this, this open top string, third fret on the second string, open top string, second fret on the second string. It's almost like he's cramming in too many notes here. It kind of goes to 16th notes. So just have to be careful with the timing here. Then we've got an open fifth string, open second string. Then this nice sliding idea. We're sliding up to the fourth fret on the third string. Doing that again. Sliding off and then an open fourth string. So all together that bar is And then we've just got one more bar of this kind of D stuff. And then to lead back up to the four chord, I'm just playing second string, second fret on the third string, second string. And then we're kind of going around again. We're back to the four chord as before. Again, just playing that exactly the same as before. Back to D. So it's more D stuff here and it's probably best you listen to the recording to get all of the, the nuances here. But what I'm hearing in the first verse is this. a little 
triplet run up on the B string there. Yeah, more of the same thing. Then we're back to this. That high stuff playing that exactly as we had before, then that takes us into the second verse. And that's really it. It goes around for another verse. I think there are five or six verses, all of them basically the same, but with some slight variations. So you can hear those for yourself on the recording. It's all based on these basic shapes and ideas that I've shown you. So I think the only other thing left to talk about is the ending, which goes a little bit like this. We've got... something like that. So I'm starting on the third string. I'm playing fourth, sixth, sliding up to the ninth fret, just falling into this little double stop shape here. So it's nine on the third string, eight on the second string, and we've got so moving that back one fret and then back up again. Then moving it down. playing triplets there, open top string. A little bit hard to hear what the thumb is doing here, it seems a little bit random, but I think it's starting on the, the sixth string. And then moving to the fifth string. Little bend at the third fret here, and then we've got triplets with the fifth string and the second string. Two on the second string, open top string. And this kind of idea to open two top strings, then we're moving this little shape down. It's the third fret on the first and third strings. Just moving that down. two to zero on the second string, and then it ends like this. So, little melody on the second string. And then we've got a final chord here, which is just the open outside strings, and that third fret note on the second string. Let me tell you about the guitar I'm using today. This is a Martin 0015M. It's an all mahogany guitar. It's got that comfortable 00, slightly smaller sized body. And this is really my favorite guitar at the moment for finger style stuff. The strings I'm using are Ernie Ball Earthwood. I think they're light gauge strings. And I've played these strings in quite a lot. I don't like the sound of really bright, sparkly new strings on acoustic guitars and particularly with this kind of style it just doesn't really seem to suit this type of music. I'm recording the guitar today with a Royer ribbon microphone and again the idea is to get a warm unhyped kind of a sound and from there I'm just going straight into my computer. Just a little bit of compression I think I'm using in the computer but nothing much in the way of EQ. I think I've just rolled off some of the very low end just so there's no rumble when I'm tapping my foot. So that's roughly how Devil Got My Woman goes, but I think in particular with this one it's important to listen to the original recording and by doing that you'll be able to pick up on the variations and nuances which I've not really been able to get into in this video. If you'd like to get hold of the copy of my original tab then that will be up on my Patreon page and do check out my other blues lessons. I've done quite a lot of electric blues stuff. I've done a few acoustic blues things. I think I've done a easy Robert Johnson style piece, which you might like to check out elsewhere on this channel or on my website. Thanks a lot for watching. I shall see you next time. Bye.